let me bring up the next topic that people mm. don't want to mention, although they're getting more comfortable with it, is consciousness. Mm. You mentioned uh, you have a talk on consciousness that I watched five minutes of, but the internet connection was, was really was this, bad. Was this, was this my talk about you know uh, uh, refuting the integrated information theory? Yes, which it was might this have particular been. account of consciousness yeah. that yeah I think one can just show it doesn't work. But <laughs> so let me much uh, harder to say what does work. What does work? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, so yeah. Let me ask. Uh, maybe it'd be nice to uh, comment on. You, you talk about also like the, the semi hard problem of consciousness, or yeah. like almost hard problem, or kind of yeah. hard, pretty pretty hard, pretty problem, hard. I think pretty. I call it. So maybe can you uh, talk about that? Uh, their idea of uh, of uh, the approach to modeling consciousness and why you don't find it convincing. Yeah. What is it, first of all? What uh, well, okay? What? Well, so so what 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 I called the pretty hard problem of consciousness. This is my term, although many other people have said something equivalent to this. Okay. Uh, but uh, it, it's just you know the 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 problem of you know giving an account of just which physical systems are conscious and which are not, or you know if there are degrees of consciousness, then quantifying how conscious a given system is. Oh, right? awesome! So that's the pretty hard. Yeah, problem. that that's what I mean. That's by. it. I'm adopting that's, it. That, I love it. That's a good that's I mean, a good ring right. to it. And so you know the infamous hard problem of consciousness is to explain how something like consciousness could arise at all, you know, yeah. in a material universe, right? Or, you know, why does it ever feel like anything to, to uh, experience anything, right? And, yeah. and, you know, so I'm trying to distinguish from that problem, right? And say, you know, no, okay, I, am, I would merely settle for an account that yeah. could say, you know, is a fetus conscious, you know, if so, at which trimester, you know, is a, uh, uh, is a dog conscious, you know, what about uh, a frog, right? Or, or it, even as a precondition, you take that both these things are conscious, tell me which is more conscious. Yeah, for example, yes. That's, yeah, yeah. I mean, if consciousness is some multidimensional vector, well, just tell me in which respects these things are conscious and in which respect they aren't, right? And, you know, and have some principled way to do it where you're not, you know, carving out exceptions for things that you like or don't like, but could somehow take a description of an arbitrary physical system. And then just based on the physical properties of that system or the informational properties or how it's connected or something like that, just in principle calculate, you know, its degree of consciousness, right? I mean, this 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 would be the kind of thing that we would need you know, if we wanted to address questions like, you know, what does it take for a machine to be conscious, right? Or when are, you know, when, when, when should we regard AIs as being conscious? Um, so now this IIT, this integrated information theory, uh, which has been put forward by uh, Giulio Tononi and uh, a bunch of his uh, uh, collaborators over the last decade or two, uh, this is noteworthy, I guess, as a direct attempt to answer that question, mm -hmm. to, you know, answer the, to address the pretty hard problem, right? And they give a, uh, a criterion that's just based on how a system is connected. So you, so it's up to you to sort of abstract a system like a brain or a microchip as a collection of components that are connected to each other by some pattern of connections, you know, and, uh, and to specify how the components can influence each other, mm -hmm. you know, like where the inputs go, you know, where they affect the outputs. But then once you've specified that, then they give this quantity that they call phi, you know, the Greek letter phi. Mm -hmm. And the definition of phi has actually changed over time. It changes from one paper to another, but in all of the variations, it involves something about what we in computer science would call graph expansion. So basically what this means is that they want, it, uh, um, in order to get a large value of phi, uh, it should not be possible to take your system and partition it into two components that are only weakly connected to each other. Okay, so whenever we take our system and sort of try to split it up into two, then there should be lots and lots of connections going between the two components. Okay, well, I understand what that means on a yeah. graph. Do they formalize what, uh, how to construct such a graph or data structure, whatever, uh, uh, or is this, well, like, one of the criticism uh, uh -huh. I, I've heard you kind of say is that yeah. a lot of the very interesting specifics are usually communicated through like natural language, like, 
like uh, through words. Mm -hmm. So it's like the details well, aren't always well. Clear. They well, it's true. I mean, they 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 have nothing even resembling a derivation of this fee. Okay, so what they do is they state a whole bunch of postulates, you know, axioms that they think that consciousness should satisfy. And then there's just some verbal discussion. And then at some point, fee appears. Right. Right. And this this was one, the first thing that really made the hair stand on my neck, to be honest, because they are acting as if there is a derivation. They're acting as if, you know, you're supposed to think that this is a derivation and there's nothing even remotely resembling a derivation. They just pull the fee out of a hat completely. So is one of the key criticisms okay. to you is that details are missing or is but there that, something that's more not, fundamental? That's not even the key criticism. That's just that's just a side point. Yeah, okay. The the core of it is that I think that the you know that they want to say that a system is more conscious the larger its value of fee. Yeah. And I think that that is obvious nonsense. Okay, as soon as you think about it for like a minute, as soon as you think about it in terms of could I construct a system that had an enormous value of fee, like, you know, even larger than the brain has, but that is just implementing an error correcting code, you know, right. doing nothing that we would associate with, you know, intelligence or consciousness or any of it. The answer is yes, it is easy to do that. Right? right. And so I wrote blog posts just making this point that, yeah, it's easy to do that. Now, you know, Tinoni's response to that was actually kind of incredible. Right. I mean, I, I, I admired it in a way because instead of disputing any of it, he just bit the bullet. In the sense, you know, he was one of the the uh, the most uh, uh, audacious bullet bitings I've ever seen in my career. OK, mm -hmm. he said, OK, then fine. You know, this system that just applies this error correcting code, it's conscious, you know, and if it has a much larger value of fee than you or me, it's much more conscious oh, than wow. you or me. Interesting. You know, you we just have to accept what the theory says, because, you know, science is not about confirming our intuitions. It's about challenging them. And, you know, this is what my theory predicts, that yeah. this thing is conscious and, you know, or super duper conscious. And how are you going to prove me wrong? <laughs> See, I would, so the way I would argue again, yeah. against yeah. your blog post uh -huh. is I would say, yes, sure, you're right in general, but uh -huh. for naturally arising systems mm -hmm. developed through the process of evolution on earth mm -hmm. the this rule of the larger fee being associated mm -hmm. being associated with more consciousness is correct yeah so, so that's just, not what he said at all right right be because he wants this to be completely general even, right so we can he, apply it to even computers yeah i mean i mean the the whole interest of the theory is the you know the hope that it could be completely general apply to aliens to computers to uh, uh uh animals coma patients to any of it right yeah and uh uh, so, so, so he just said, well, you know, uh, Scott is relying on his intuition, but, you know, I'm relying on this theory. And, you know, to me, it, it was almost like, you know, are, are we being serious here? Like, like, <laughs> like, you know, like, like, okay. It, it, yes. In science, we try to learn highly non-intuitive things, but what we do is we first test the theory on cases where we already know the answer, yeah. right? Like if we, if someone had a new theory of temperature, right? Then, you know, maybe we could check that it says that boiling water is hotter than ice. And then if it says that the sun is hotter than anything, you know, you've ever experienced, then maybe we we trust that extrapolation. Right. Mm -hmm. But like this this theory, like if if, you know, it, it's now saying that you know, a, a gigantic grid, like regular grid of exclusive OR gates can be way more conscious than, a you know, a person or than, than any animal can be, you know, even if it, you know, is, you know, is, 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 is so uniform that it might as just well just be a blank wall, right? And and so now the point is, if if this theory is sort of getting wrong, the question is a blank wall, you know, more conscious than a person. Then I would say, what is what is there for it to get right? So right? Your, your sense so, is a blank wall uh, is not uh, more conscious than a human being. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, you could say that I am taking that as one of my axioms. <laughs> I'm, I'm saying I'm saying that if if a theory of consciousness is is get, getting that wrong, then whatever it is talking about at that point, I I uh, I'm not going to call it consciousness. Well, I'm going to use a different word. You have to use a different word. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's also it's possible, just like with intelligence, mm -hmm. that us humans conveniently define these very difficult to understand concepts in a mm -hmm. very human centric way, just That's like right. the Turing test. 
really seems to define intelligence mm -hmm. as a thing that's human-like. Mm -hmm. Right, but I would say that with any uh, concept, you know, there's, uh, 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 you know, like we 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 first need to define it, right? And a right. definition is only a good definition if it matches what we thought we were talking about, you know, right. prior yeah. to having a definition, yeah. right? Yeah. And I would say that you know, uh, fee as a definition of consciousness fails that test. Th that is my argument. So okay, then let's yeah. so let's take a further step. So you yeah. mentioned that the universe might be a, a, a Turing machine. So like it might be computation or so, simulatable by one anyway. Simulatable by one. You know, I'm, so yeah. Do you, what's your sense about consciousness? Do you think consciousness is computation that we don't need to go to any place outside of the computable universe to uh, you know, to what uh, to understand consciousness, to build consciousness, to Measure consciousness, all those kinds of things. I don't know. These are what uh, you know have been called the the vertiginous questions, right? There's the questions like like uh, you know the, you get a feeling of vertigo when thinking about them, right? I mean, I certainly feel like uh, uh, I am conscious in a way that is not reducible to computation. But why should you believe me, right? <laughs> I mean, and 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 if you said the same to me, then why should I believe you? But as computer scientists, yeah. I feel like a computer could be intel could achieve human level intelligence, but, and that's actually a feeling and a hope. That's not a scientific belief. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's just we've built up enough intuition. The same kind of intuition you use in your blog, it's, you know, that's what scientists do. They, I mean, some of it is a scientific method, but some of it is just damn good mm -hmm. intuition. Mm -hmm. I don't have a good intuition about consciousness. Yeah. I'm not sure that anyone does or or has in the, you know, 2500 years that these things have been discussed, Lex. Uh, but, that, but do you think we will? Like one of the well, I got a chance to mm -hmm. attend can't wait to hear your opinion on this, but attend the Neuralink event and uh, one of the dreams there is to uh, you know, basically push neuroscience forward and the mm -hmm. hope with neuroscience is that uh, we can inspect the machinery from which all this fun stuff emerges and see, are we gonna notice something special, some special sauce from which something like consciousness or cognition emerges? Yeah, well, it's clear that we've learned an enormous amount about neuroscience. We've learned an enormous amount about computation, you know, about right. machine learning, about You'll know. AI, how to get it to work. We've learned uh, an enormous amount about the underpinnings of the physical world, you know, and, you know, from one point of view, that's like uh, an enormous distance that we've traveled along the road to understanding consciousness. From another point of view, you know, the distance still to be traveled on the road, you know, maybe seems no shorter than it was at the beginning. Yeah. Right. So it's very hard to say. I mean, you know, these are questions like, like in, in, in sort of trying to have a theory of consciousness, there's sort of a problem where it feels like it's not just that we don't know how to make progress, it's that it's hard to specify what could even count as progress, right? right? Because no matter what scientific theory someone proposed, someone else could come along and say, well, you've just talked about the mechanism. You haven't said anything about what breathes fire into the mechanism, what right. really makes there something that it's like to be it, right? And that seems like an objection that you could always raise, yes. no matter you know, how much someone elucidated the details of how the brain works.